So, hello everybody. It is really a pleasure to be here the first time in Sweden, the first time in Malmö. Uh, I'm Nazanin Danishvar, um, the founder and the CEO of Takhfifen, the first group buying and the biggest by now in Iran. Um, so I'm here to actually tell you a story about uh, somewhere in the world that probably, uh, as he mentioned, the media hasn't really gone so much into details and um, yeah, well, we have to know more about it. So, um, entrepreneurship uh, is, uh, is a story that has started for me around five years ago when I decided to drop my job in Germany and go back to Iran and start my second company. The first one failed, by the way, in Iran. And uh, this was the second time. Again, I did try. So, um, here you see my sister and me, well, a couple of years back, younger, in Tehran. Uh, we just won an award of entrepreneurship that was a photo taken by a colleague. So we started Takhfi from five years ago when I moved back. I was a developer, so I, this, I mean, as a developer, you sometimes think, okay, as you know how to code, then you know how to run a business, which is the biggest mistake. Um, so I started coding the Takhfi fund. I moved back five and ten days ago uh, to Tehran. Started with my sister, just two-man show company. We were customer support. We were content people. We were developers on the weekends. We were graphic designer. I managed to learn Photoshop at that point. Well, Photoshop. And, uh, well, yeah, so we grew from two people to 100 people over five years completely organically uh, without a penny invested in the company. And uh, we grew from 400 subscribers and um, so, uh, well, basically, we um, just a quick, um, basically, introduction. We offer discounts, vouchers, coupons, all of our services, products nationwide to villages, cities, massive ones, small ones, anywhere in Iran, people can shop and buy from us. We've been featured in more than 20 international media that some of them uh, you see on the board. And we are the only female-founded technology company still, unfortunately, in Tehran and Iran. So now going back to the story. So just to let you know, this picture is actually from Isfahan in Tehran, a very famous a bridge called 33 Bridges from the people that have ever been in Iran, which uh, dried out because after so many years with lots of caring, the river didn't actually uh, come over to the city anymore. So this was the story when I got back to Iran five years ago. Um, I was just like, okay, startup community, and there was nothing, it was just me. Uh, rented a 40 square meter flat uh, from all my savings, started with my sister, took all the computer, everything that we had at home, just to the office, started working. And um, yeah, well, the story started. So basically, it looked like 1990s of America. We didn't have anything. And uh, yeah, just not dial up, but ADSA, but very 128K was the maximum speed that you could get as a residential house. So you could imagine what a disaster it was. And uh, well, we do have our own calendar. 1390s is actually Hijri calendar, which uh, some people know about it. So uh, just to let you know, we are now in 1395 of the world. Uh, so it is five years ago that literally when I got there, there was no company, no internet company, e-commerce. My mom thought like, Whenever we were going somewhere, everybody was just introducing their kids. My mom was just, I don't know what she does. She does have a website or something. So, I mean, right now, it's still like my mom looks at the company. We are in uh, five floors working just in Tehran and some headquarters. Still she, she believes like, I mean, nobody would have dropped a job in Germany going back to Iran. Um, so, we started the company actually uh, with the closure of the great sanctions on Iran. Um, as you may know, technology startups is already a very new kind of uh, verge that companies start working. And in Iran, we didn't have any e-commerce companies that were working, no international ones. We suddenly got 40 to 50 percent inflation rate because of all the sanctions that happened. And the currency devaluated 300 times over a year, which 
was a surprise. Every single morning, you were opening a news, something coming from somewhere, and that was actually the real story that happened to every single person, and uh, due to that fact, lots of companies shut down. And we were just in the middle of nowhere, two sisters sitting. We were just wondering, okay, now we got one voucher sold, two, three, four. So we were just happy that uh, we could actually make some money after six months. So we could actually install the first banner as a display just to get more customers. Uh, the scenery, uh, the next scenery shows you something interesting. If you go to the entrepreneurship index of the world that actually indexes all the countries around the world based on what they have done in the last year and gives them a score about what is their ranking. In 2013, and uh, we will see in the slides, and 2014, Iran had the highest rise on entrepreneurship. So, um, and if you go to Google Trends, you look at it, the word start for the first time started being searched in 2012 in Iran. So before that, the history is just not there. So we never had anything. So imagine I, I, I ended up in Tehran back in 2010. So for two years, nobody knew. After two years, there was um, this uh, expat, Iranian expat that uh, became quite successful in Silicon Valley, he decided to come back to Iran and start the first venture capital. And uh, they persuaded the government that they have to start investing in startups in the community. Uh, and that was the point that we started having startup weekends. Uh, on, the, on the first startup weekend ever in Iran, I was actually a participant to just get to know what's going on. And then later on, just a mentor and a judge. So we had 2,500 people all over Iran uh, that uh, participated in um, the events, and uh, right now I'm so happy to say that there is not a single week or weekend that we don't have anything going on in the biggest cities. And the interesting thing is just like probably nobody knows, there are lots of good companies that came out of all these start weekends. One of them that uh, is now still a close friend of mine, um, they actually teamed up in Startup Weekend, getting to know how they could plan and make a small company starting on their own. And just to clarify, all this still happens organically in Iran. Um, they started creating apps and they, uh, they uploaded it to Apple Store and Android Market. But uh, as we are sanctioned again by uh, all our good friends in America, so they couldn't announce that they are an Iranian company. And the app got to the featured place in the whole uh, stores, uh, announcing this is like a new feature, but the company was registered in Singapore. So there are lots of these kind of companies that are actually pretty successful, but nobody still knows that they are actually like working, operating, the whole team is settled in Tehran. Um, this is again, uh, basically in the Congress in Milan, they announced that the 3,000 participants have been participated in the last year, in the 2015. Uh, in the um, events uh, from 18 cities and uh, over 32 events that uh, shows that uh, basically again it helped the entrepreneurship index rise quite a bit. Um, in this slide you see uh, the ecosystem that have been created over these years in Iran. I mean these years, I mean the last three years. Um, the first one is about um, the event, and we got the first accelerator running, which is called Avatech. The demon, the, uh, and these are all like privately owned, so we still don't have any state uh, invested uh, proper accelerator. We got the first technology city set up outside Tehran that uh, offers, I mean, tax free zone, lots of, well, lots of. Uh, uh, abilities and capabilities for the companies, but because it's so far away, nobody wants to move there, but it is there. So, um, And then we got the first venture capital set up, as I call Sarawa, which uh, has invested in our company three months ago, uh, is the first one. Um, and, uh, sorry, is the first one, and the other two are state-owned, but they never invest in a technology company. So far, I think it is not really, the mentality is still not there. And the IT companies that basically write over media and all the story about um, uh, about the um, what is going on. So the, the Iranian version of TechCrunch, there are so many of them. And uh, eventually, the governmental institutes that started creating. Um, 
access and permissions for all the companies to operate over that. And we have one NGO that supports all the entrepreneurs. If anybody wants to come from outside world, doesn't know where to see, where are the companies, how to connect the people. And uh, we have always been good with the universities and education. And there are like Sharif University, Technology University, Amir Kabir Technology University, that they all super support entrepreneurship. By the time that I got to Iran five years ago, we didn't have any uh, field for studying entrepreneurship except uh, at the uh, bachelor level, but now you can study up to PhD and get a specialized over that. Again, going to entrepreneurship skills uh, index, sorry, it is from 2014 to 2015. Iran was the highest, and then it is Latvia, and then Greece, and the second and the third step. On the next scene, I actually want to show you right now what is going on in Iran. The warehouse that you see in the back is the actual picture of one corner of a warehouse, Iranian Amazon, called Digikala, that they deliver 30,000 orders a day. They were 20 people four years ago before they get investor uh, from the same VC that I talked about, and now there are over 1,500 people working there. So, um, well, it goes down to lots of other companies that I will introduce later in the slide. And the same goes, uh, as I said, Tahrifan. We started with two people, grew to 100 people, uh, got funded three months ago. So we are looking for much more expansion in different areas. Um, one thing about uh, living in Iran shows you there are always issues and that is you that need to come over and do not give up. This is something that basically we practice every single day, and I'll tell you why. When I ended up in Tehran, back home, I was 26 years old. Uh, well, I studied in Iran, but flew uh, out straight away to London and then Germany. Um, well, I was 26, the founder of the company, quiet, passionate, and quiet, like having a high self-confidence. Um, I went, we, have, we have a tower called Mila Tower. It's similar to CN Tower or all these towers in every city. Um, I remember um, I decided to actually sign the first contract with these guys. Um, I went there. I got the meeting from the marketing manager. I ended up uh, in the room of the marketing manager. I'm just like explaining the whole business. And then he gets so excited and he looked at me. He was just like, okay, where is your manager? I was just like, manager? I am the manager, and he was just like, look, just don't waste my time. Just go out. Come back with your manager. And I was just like, okay. And then I go home quite confused. and just like, Dad, I, I just don't know what this guy is talking about. You know, I'm the manager. And he was just like, look, this is Iran. You have to actually localize, get localized a bit more. So I go back with my dad. And then I'm just like, okay, here is my manager. And he's just like, oh, great, yeah, welcome, please. And then we signed the contract. But uh, my dad was just like looking around. And actually, we started practicing this for over a year because nobody could have listened to us. And I was the older sister. I mean, my younger sister was not even showing up. Um, so that happened that I was the superwoman in the whole story. Later on, that we got announced as the best entrepreneurs of the year. Then everybody saw us on the media and TV, stuff like that. So it was slightly better. Right now, uh, sometimes I have an argument with the merchants. We have over 15,000 merchants just in Terra. And then some of them are just like, you know, some people anyway, they call me, yeah, you woman sitting in your room making a lot of money. You don't have a clue how the business runs. And just like, thank you very much. Yeah, but there are 100 people working in here anyway. So um, the next issue that we actually, and I could never actually think about it, is the HR issue. That is me and some of my colleagues from other companies. Uh, the issue is all the people got graduated from university. I mean, from my university, I'm the only one which is left. And I immigrated and I went back. So everybody has left the country and they never want to go back. I mean, at this, at this stage. Um, so there is no people like uh, from good universities that want to stay in the country. And second of all, we don't have the knowledge because the knowledge comes when the international companies manage to get into a market, they start training people, you get to know more and get trainings and stuff like that. We don't have it. So how it works is like, 
I had to learn accounting, I had to learn the SEO, digital marketing, content management, all sorts of things like, and all my friends are the same story. So through the experience, we had to go through all these phases. Um, when we wanted to set up a digital marketing team, like uh, in our company, I had to read through and talk to all my friends in Europe. It's like, how does it work? And then I went to all courses like of analytics, adverts, etc. But as a CEO of a company, you don't have to know all the details. But when you don't have people and you want to get people and start training them, it's just like, that is the story. And uh, so basically finding a talent leaves us just like these horses looking for a needle, um, which there is no talent. So we are constantly trying to build up everything internally. And uh, as you may have an experience, you get graduate people or a bit experience in different fields. They come to your company, they see you in six months, they're just like, I can do it, she has done it, goodbye. And then it's just like, again, from the, basically it starts from the beginning. So the amazing sanctions didn't just affect the commercial and financial situation, economical situation of the country. We have been sanctioned by Google and Facebook forever, um, which obviously means we don't have any Google AdWords, we don't have any Facebook ads running, we don't have any Instagram ads, we don't have any, any of the things that actually, when the foreign companies come to Iran, they talk to me and I just say, so what are you doing? And it's just like, well, we have our own ways of marketing. And then uh, that was for me very interesting when I saw and the basically attendees and the companies in this conference, a company called MailChimp. Uh, so our story with MailChimp was very interesting. Uh, we started with MailChimp from the beginning. We registered with those guys and started growing our, uh, started growing our uh, database. And uh, well, one day we woke up when we had over half a million subscribers. MailChimp wrote us an email saying that we're going to shut you down till evening. And we were just like, what? What? This is our business. We kept on writing back, but obviously they never answered. So um, that was one of the challenges that left us. For months, we had to go through different companies, South Africa, India, all sorts of like all around the world. Maybe they accept us as a company working in Iran, but obviously, yeah. So this is me after a day of working because there are, I mean, regardless of all these external issues, we do have so many internal issues of the trust of the legal entity, infrastructure, and the culture of the people that is actually not there. Uh, I'm just going to go so quickly, I'm finished. So I just want to show a couple of last slides of the Iran being the uh, fertile ground of having around 79 million uh, population which 64% of them are under 35 years old, 41% uh, between 20 to 35 years old, which leaves a massive population to touch and third largest blogger country in the world. And this is the penetration rate that have increased from 42% to 55% over internet and mobile 99% to 126%. And uh, we are having 54% of the Middle East internet users just in Iran. And these are the Iranian versions of everything that you have in the world. We have Iranian Amazon Digicola, we have Iranian Android market called Cafe Bazaar, Operat is an Iranian YouTube, we are the Iranian Groupon, and all these companies that have been created internally, grown to massive number of people and the number of users that they have. And so basically, this has been the story of the whole internet rise in Iran in the last couple of years. We are really looking for a great future to come, and uh, the future is bright. I mean, this is a very famous poem. Uh, from uh, Persian literature that says, like waves, our rest is our extinction. Thank you very much. <laughs>